just uh, quietly. <laughs> the Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this adjournment proceeding stems from a question I asked the Minister of Environment and Climate Change back on the 2nd of March. We had just heard reports that the high Arctic had seen record high temperatures, more than 30 degrees Celsius above normal, leading to melting ice in the middle of winter. Think of it, sea ice melting in midwinter near the North Pole when the sun isn't shining. Something is clearly wrong with this picture. But we know what's wrong with this picture. The climate is changing because we're putting too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Now Canada committed in Paris with countries around the world to keep global temperature change below 2 degrees Celsius. Other countries have stepped up and done their bit. Many European countries have already met ambitious targets. But the Liberal government chose to stick with the weak, inadequate targets set by the Harper government. And every analyst will tell you that Canada's action plan, if, that you, if you can call it that, won't even get us anywhere near those targets. The minister uh, answered my question by saying that the government had brought in a national carbon pricing plan, and I applaud the government for that. It's a good first step and might get us almost halfway there. The fact is that most Canadians were living under a carbon pricing plan before the uh, federal government stepped up. British Columbia, uh, we've been living with carbon tax for almost a decade now. The minister mentioned that many provinces has, have phased out or are in the process of phasing out coal, and that's admirable and necessary as well. But again, it wasn't the result of federal government action. The minister also mentioned we are saying the right things on the international stage, but that will only work for so long until Canada comes up with a plan to do the necessary work here at home. We can't implore other countries to make deep cuts to their carbon emissions if we're not doing the same. Now, last December, Canada's progress report to the UN showed that we will be 66 megatons short of our target by 2030, and that gap has doubled since the Liberals came to power. We're going in the wrong direction. 80% of our emissions come from the transportation and oil and gas industries. And now we bought a pipeline, a 65-year-old leaky pipeline for eight times the cost that Kinder Morgan paid for it just a decade ago. So how can the government square this with meeting our climate goals? How can the government square this with their promise to do away with subsidies for the fossil fuel industry? And we're dealing with the low-hanging fruit right now. Getting to our 2050 target of an 80% reduction will be more difficult still. I hear the government is trying to use land use and forestry carbon sequestration to fudge their own efforts. Whether this is allowed under the Paris Agreement is unknown, but I do know that the Climate Action Tracker website states that such a move would change their assessments of the climate actions of Canada from insufficient to highly insufficient. So, Madam Speaker, the Minister finished her answer by saying, we are all in on climate action. We're serious. We owe it to our kids. Well, when will the Liberals actually get serious and do what is necessary to fight climate change? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of uh, Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Canada's First Ministers adopted Canada's Clean Growth and Climate Plan in December of 2016 to take ambitious action to fight climate change, to adapt and build resilience to the changing climate, and to drive clean economic growth. The landmark achievement of the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change is the first climate change plan in Canada's history to include joint and individual commitments by federal, provincial, and territorial governments and to have been developed with input from Indigenous peoples. Le cadre pan-canadien. There are more than 50 measures to reduce carbon pollution strengthen our adaptation and resistance to the impact of climate change, develop clean technology, and create good jobs that contribute to a strong economy. Spending the Pan-Canadian framework, and we are starting to see results, putting Canada on the path to meet our Paris Agreement greenhouse gas emissions reduction target of 30 per cent below 2005 by 2030. As published in December 2017 in Canada's third biennial report to the UNFCCC, 
Canada's greenhouse gas emissions are currently projected to be 583 megatons of CO2 in 2030, which is 232 megatons lower than what was projected in our second biannual report, which was released in early 2016. This decline in projected emissions is the biggest improvement in Canada's emissions outlook since reporting began, and it is widespread across all economic sectors, re reflecting the breadth and the depth of the pan-Canadian framework on clean growth and climate change. But it is important to note that these projections do not account for expected emissions reductions in several other areas, including historically significant investments in public transit, where $20 billion is being invested to improve public transit infrastructure. Extensive investments in clean technology and innovation that will promote green growth and lead to new technologies to reduce emissions from industry and other sectors. And carbon that may be stored in forests, soils and wetlands, which can be significant for a country of the size of Canada. Ces prévisions ne reflètent non plus les politiques qui... There are policies that could be adopted by the federal government, the municipal or provincial and territorial governments by 2030. Canada, as well as the provinces and territories, have committed to examining the results of these policies in order to increase our ambitions over time. Following this process, it's possible we will identify other policies that are necessary in the future. Then the pan-Canadian framework are fully implemented. It will not only allow Canada to meet its 2030 target in full, but position Canada to set and achieve deeper emissions reduction targets beyond 2030, as is required by the Paris Agreement. Uh, Madame le Président, Madam Speaker, committed to addressing the threat of climate change, Canada has played a constructive role on the international stage. We have worked with provinces, territories, and Indigenous peoples to develop a comprehensive and detailed plan that will, make a, that will ensure that we meet our Paris Agreement targets. We are firmly committed to actively fighting climate change and to, and to creating and growing a clean growth economy. Thank you very much. The Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenai. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, it's after midnight, and we all want to go home, so I'll be brief in my reply. Uh, as the Minister said, we all. We need to go all in on climate action. We need to go all in on electrification of our transport systems, all in on e energy retrofits, all in on home solar systems. Just think what $4.5 billion would do there. And I'll finish by saying that ministers get up every day in this House and say loudly, this pipeline will be built, and the economy and the environment go hand in hand. Well, if the economy and the environment go hand in hand, and this pipeline will be built. I'd like to hear from the Parliamentary Secretary a firm promise that we will meet our 2030 Paris targets, and I'd like to see the plan that will actually get us there. Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and, uh, and thank you to the Honourable Member for his question. Uh, he and I have worked together productively on other files, um, and, and I have great respect for, uh, for, for the Honourable Member. Um, I would say that, uh, that we are very focused on achieving the 2030 target. That is absolutely uh, a key focus uh, of this government. We included all of the upstream emissions associated with the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion in the pan-Canadian framework to ensure that they were addressed in the context of Canada's plan to achieve its Paris uh, reduction targets. Uh, in the pan-Canadian framework, we address issues around transportation and the electrification of transportation, the phase-out of coal, methane regulations, clean fuel standards to reduce the carbon content of the fuels that we use, building codes to improve energy efficiency, and a range of other measures. And I certainly would encourage the member to have a look at that plan because that plan actually will get us to our targets. Resuming debate,